Hello, hello, hello. How y'all doing today? Hello. So this is Javan Johnson here with... Riss Walker. Riss Walker, my beautiful girlfriend, Larissa. And uh, one of the things we're doing is today we're going to do, we're going to get into the Word a little bit. Because during our private time, we will sometimes, we will study the Bible together. We'll kind of break it down, like I'll read five verses in a row, she'll read five verses in a row. You know, until we get through a chapter, we kind of break things down. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's... It's nice to have somebody you can study the Bible with, to have a woman who, who knows the Bible and who wants to study it with you. Yeah, it is. That's a blessing. So we'll be reading from the King James Version. I'm going to read the first five verses, and then she will read the remaining. All right. So it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bear fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And verse 6 says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. And verse 7 says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. And verse 8, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. 9 says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. And ten, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Amen, amen. It's so much in there, um, you know, to talk about. I mean, when you look at it in verse 1, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husband man. So we see that, even that, that analogy, you're even setting up the vine. And when I think about a vine, when I think about the connection, how important it is, you can think about really any plant, if, if, it, if the root system gets broken, then that plant can die very quickly. But if it stays connected, if you think about a branch on a tree, if, if somebody goes and they take that branch off the tree and it's not getting the, the water, it's not getting what it needs, it can die very quickly. And so it's so important for us being, being born again believers to stay connected with God each and every day. There's so many different things, distractions that can be coming at us, you know, through television, through media, through whatever it is that we encounter. And it's so important, you know, to, to stay connected to God. Right. Um, I would also add, well, in NLT, because it kind of breaks it down a little bit more, it says, I am a true grapevine and my father is the gardener. Mm -hmm. But like you said, I think that was a great way to put it. And just with when, it, when dealing with plants, that when it's connected mm -hmm. to the vine, that's life. And so it's important for us to make sure that we're connected because that's where our life source is. Amen. Well, very well said. And it talks about every branch that bears not fruit, he taketh away. One of the things, you know, when you look at in the Bible, it's important for us as Christians to shine the light of Jesus Christ, to get out here and exemplify what it means to be a Christian. And I look at it really, it's not just something we do out of duty, but it's something that even as we commune with, you know, with Jesus and we spend time with him, it's going to be a, a byproduct of it. I mean, it's like, well, Larissa, I love her. So there's certain things I'm going to do as a byproduct of my love for her. Right. That's right. Um, and then just highlighting the fact that in verse 2, it is talking about um, bearing fruit and just the importance of believers, like he said, that you should see the manifestation of. If you say that you're connected to God and you say that you love Jesus, you should be, you know, bearing fruit. There should be that physical manifestation. It should be evident within your lifestyle and your actions. Amen. Amen. Very well said. Um, now in verse 3 it talks about how you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. But when I think about clean, I think about each and every day when we, you know, we get up in the morning, we have a regimen we go through. And it's like, you know, we want to be clean before we walk out of the house. I mean, each and every day it's important for us to renew our minds with the word of God. So, I mean, there's so many different things like I mentioned earlier that can come, distractions. And we need to get that word in us every day, making sure that we're renewing our minds with the word. That's good. I don't mm -hmm. think I have anything to add to that one. Okay, well, praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Um, and then verse 4, I'll let you uh, jump into that one. I think that's, that's right. I like this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm again, I'm in the NLT um, mm -hmm. now. 
Remain in me and I will remain in you, for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Um, <clears throat> just, a, a, you know, King James talks about abiding, the importance of abiding, because this is Jesus talking, the importance of abiding mm -hmm. in, in Christ, um, abiding or remaining in Him, mm -hmm. and how, you know, it, a branch can't produce fruit unless it's connected to the vine. Absolutely. So we can't produce good fruit unless we're connected to Jesus. And the moment that we pull away from him, that's the moment where we notice ourselves slipping back into carnality, slipping mm -hmm. back into worldly ways. So it is important to make sure that we are connected to the vine. And we can do that by spending time in the Word, spending mm -hmm. time in prayer, and constantly feeding our spirits with the Word of God. Amen. Very well said. One, uh, one other thing is sometimes what can happen if people aren't careful is they can start off trusting God for a situation and then they see okay God's working things out and then they say okay God let me handle it from here or they yes. try to do their own thing it's so important to be consistent as well and if you find yourself slipping to make sure that you know that we repent right Amen. that's good yeah. um you're going to verse 5 sure sure it talks about once again I am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and I in him and I in him excuse me the same bring forth much fruit for without me you can do nothing mm -hmm. so it's so important to abide in God, I mean, yeah. to, to make sure that you have that word in you, and making sure that you're obeying it, because you can you can hear the word, but if you're not applying the word to your life, right. then you're not going to produce those results. It's, it's like with me, a lot of times I use sports analogies. I got have a coach who could tell me they could tell us to play. We can be you know in a timeout, and if the coach tells us to play, we're like, yeah, okay, got it, got it, and then we just go out. We don't do anything that, that the coach said to do. I mean, it, we're not going to have we're not going to produce the results we want. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so, yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. So, um, again, Jesus reiterating, he's that life source and we're connected to him. And mm -hmm. for those who choose to abide in him, to remain in him, obviously he abides and remains because the word says that when we draw close to him, he draws close to us. And then those people who make that decision will produce much fruit. And you'll see that evident in your life, not only by the way that you behave in your actions and the things that you say, but you'll also see the, man my phone, I'm sorry. You'll also see the manifestation of that in um, your life as well and then like my favorite part of this because this is my favorite scripture and mm -hmm. this were apart from me you can do nothing mm -hmm. so just making sure that we're living lives and being reliant upon and abiding in Christ and not trying to do anything in and of ourselves because that's prideful anyway amen amen I mean I think she hit that nail right on the head I mean she hit everything there's nothing else for me to say behind that um, and I think number when you get into verse 6 you know it talks about what happens if you don't do it? It kind of goes just further in more detail. And I mean, we know that if we serve God and we obey Him, there is rewards. You know, we can continue to advance and progress. But if we don't, you know, there are consequences. And so I know sometimes, you know, people will kind of just don't want to deal with the consequences or talk about it. But there are consequences. God is a loving God, but He, he gives us, he, he lays out the blueprint. And if we don't, we don't apply it to our lives, then, you know, we, we, can, we can really miss out on opportunities. And then even more so than that, we can find ourselves in a world of trouble. So we want to make sure that, you know, that we apply what, what, the, what the Word says and not to allow ourselves to get off into pride. Um, like she, was, she mentioned pride earlier, and pride comes before a fall. I mean, pride is one of those things that it can really, it can, it can destroy somebody's life. Mm -hmm. it, it can really just take them out of the will of God. Right. Um, and one of the great things about the Bible is it does give those, those cause and effect relationships. And so it does tell us, you know, this is what you should do, but this is what happens if you choose to do otherwise. And for me, that's what verse 6 is saying. Anyone who doesn't remain in me is thrown away. And it's like in, in reality, you know, naturally, you have branches that have fallen away from the tree. Those are useless. We're not going to save those. They're mm -hmm. dead. You don't need it. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. We just want to make sure that we, as children of God, are not getting ourselves in places where we're useless. Mm -hmm. We want to continue to make sure that we're prepared and usable vessels for God. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very well said. Um, I guess I'll jump down to verse 8 where it talks about hearing, Is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. I mean, that's another thing we want to look at. With our lives, we want to glorify God. You know, I mean, that's the thing. When people see us, when we're out and about living our lives, people, they should see something different about us. You know, whatever I go through, it's like the joy of the Lord is my strength. So if I encounter anything, I can be, I can be happy just knowing the fact that, you know, I have salvation through Jesus Christ. And I think that, you know, we bear the fruit as far as showing forth love and just our overall walk. Mm -hmm. I think we skip verse 7, so I want to go back to verse mm -hmm. 7. Mm -hmm. um, so 7 says, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you can 
ask anything you want and it will be granted. Yeah. So like I said before, the cause and effect relationship, so in six is saying if you choose not to do that, mm -hmm. these are the consequences, but then right. seven is saying if you choose to remain in me, this is what happens. And so it, it says that you can ask anything you want and it will be granted. Now obviously whatever we're asking for it does need to be in line with the word of God. Amen. Right. Um, but whatever you're asking for in line with the word of God, when you make sure that you are remaining and abiding in Christ, you can guarantee that it will be done and it will be granted according to the word of God. No. That was good. She preaching right there. You seem like you got some more. You seem like you're ready to preach right there. <laughs> Come on. Yes. No, I was just going to mm. go into verse 8, which yeah. you already talked about. When you yeah. produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. Um, and that's just the evidence. That's how people know us. Mm. They know us by our love. They know us by our fruit. Mm -hmm. And so um, when we abide in Christ, people do see that. And they can see that we belong to God and we are his disciples. Mm. And that is what brings God glory. Yes. Which oftentimes everybody's like, oh, we want to glorify God. Mm. But this is how you do it. You exactly. have to be living according to what the Lord said. The application. Come yeah. on. There you go. There you go. And uh, verse 9, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. I mean, when you think about the love of God, sometimes I think if somebody doesn't understand, and I, I, I'll put it to you like this, there's a lot of things about God's love that I don't think we can fully comprehend, yeah. but there's a lot that the Bible does tell us about His love. And just from what the Bible tells us, there's a lot that we can grasp and gather. Mm -hmm. And I think that once you truly realize how much God loves you, it, it just... It just blows you away like yeah. okay the fact that jesus i mean he came laid down his life for us so we can have eternal life we was on our way to hell yeah. i mean when you think about that that sacrifice that he made i mean it really can just change your whole perspective on life and just really make you grateful and appreciative if you truly get it you know once it, once everything clicks and you get that it's like okay god well i want to deny myself i want to give you my all and, and once you apply that that's the thing that can allow you to forgive other people you know yeah. if you're dealing with something and somebody's done something that's, that's crossed you the wrong way or that type of thing um you know you, you can forgive others as well mm -hmm. yeah um i look at the latter part of verse 9 as, as, as a command you know, mm -hmm. it's telling us to do something remain in my love and i think just even in the world that we live in and just dealing with people there are many opportunities to to step outside of that love mm -hmm. the word of god is instructing us to remain there stay there remain in his love mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then I think the continuation right in 10. Mm -hmm. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. I know I want to abide in God. I want to abide in his love. I want to keep his commandments. You know, I want to mm -hmm. please him. And so we have, you know, the, the, the instructions on how to do that right now. And I think we just have to just rehearse that and, you know, renew our minds with it each and every day. And I know you got some fire for this one, so I'm going to pass it to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say for verse 10, verse 10 is just that clarity um, mm -hmm. for verse 9, because verse 9 says, remain in my love. And then oftentimes the thought is, well, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. Because it sounds simple, but it's like, how do I remain in the love of Jesus? Right. And then we kind of try to conjure up all these ways that we can. But right here in mm -hmm. verse 10, it says, when you, when you obey my commandments, that's when right. you're remaining in my love. So how do we remain in the love of Jesus? It's by obeying those commandments. We have to do what the Word says. It yes. always goes back to doing what the Word says. Absolutely. And that's how we abide in that love. Absolutely. Yes. So, I mean, you know, this is a quick little um, breakdown. But this is what we do sometimes. And I think it's good um, to, to do this type of thing. I mean, whether you're couples or whether you are, you know, you have somebody, just another brother or sister in Christ. You know, I think it's good to break down the Word. But definitely, like, when you're, like, courting, you know, a couple, I think you definitely want to be able to break down the Word. Uh, what's your significant other because it's something you both share you know you both have a love for Christ yeah. and you can just grow and learn together and everything and hear different perspectives like how we did today mm -hmm. yes so anything else you would like to add huh no I love this and I think it, it does it, whoever you are doing the study with it, it brings those two people together and just being able to, to fellowship in that way talking about the things of God it's absolutely. a benefit to relationship absolutely alright well, y'all be blessed and we shall talk to you later